There's a ping pong that you may be able to tell on this recording. The iPad that I'm recording the songs in stereo. So I've got a regular delay plus a ping pong delay and then a big fat uh, reverb. And I'm trying to replace the uh, black hole reverb on my big pedal board from the Eventide H9. Plus I use the shimmer reverb on the H9. So this is the particle reverb that I believe is from the Legacy series of effects in the H9. I'm sorry, in the Helix. HX Stomp. Now you're probably hearing a little bit of my natural guitar. So yes, I'm going to show you my guitar rig setup and the sounds that I have. I also want to show you some uh, just creative things that you can do with it. I'm barely picking here. Just kind of feathering the strings. Vibrato here. If I push too hard, it'll come out of tune. So remember, you're, as silly as it sounds, you're playing an instrument. You are driving, you are in control. Whether I play here or so it's not just the overdrives and delays, it's how you're playing each note on the guitar. That's what's being amplified. Okay, now. Hear the ping pong? I'm not sure what the iPad's picking up. I know it's in stereo, and so is this, but I'm not sure how well that's translating. So here I have a little bit of natural reverb from the amp simulation that I have. And I have a regular delay on 440 milliseconds with probably about bam, 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 bam. Usually on the fourth trail, it's almost gone. Uh, and then the ping pong. So let me turn the ping pong off so you can hear just the delay. In the effects loop, I have my two tube screamers, and I had the first one turned on, so here's no tube screamer. Now everything is off except the compressor and the amplifier.
tube screamer. When I turn the tube screamer on, here is the tube screamer. Now I'm going to turn on the second tube screamer. Okay, so here with the second tube screamer. Dirty, pretty gritty. That's not going to be my main sound. When I'm in the moment and playing lead and this wall of sound and I have that, it serves a purpose really well. But if I'm going to look at the sound just kind of naked, it's not bad. It's growing on me. Pretty trashy sounding so if you don't want trash but when you're playing sometimes this is exactly what you need is that kind of trashy sound but it doesn't sound trashy at all in context okay so you've got to make sure that when you're setting something up you then play it put it in context um, don't try to isolate a sound and you'll start kind of chasing your tail Okay, so I have everything turned on, both tube screamers, my delay, my ping pong. I keep my uh, compression and amp turned on the whole time. And I want to show you a couple of things. I just used my pick on that. Total volume dynamics with my middle finger. So I use a combination of my pick, my, my middle finger. I put my pick here and have. My string is the umph that goes into my pedal board. Uh, the more signal that goes in, the more distortion, but also the compression is going to grab it, soften it up just a little bit. So instead of it being really high and really low volume, it kind of brings it, the floor up and the ceiling down a little bit on it. I do not like to over compress. Uh, I've only been using a compressor on my pedal board for less than two years. I never thought I'd have one, but it's subtle and I like it. Uh, and I got a simple one. I got a really nice um, Strymon, um, and there's three knobs on it. Uh, the compression and the volume and then a boost. Um, so I can turn on and off the boost, turn on and off the compression. Really nice, simple... Harmonizer off and the second distortion.
when you're playing, your right hand is like a set of paintbrushes. So that's my acoustic guitar, my pedal board, my settings. Uh, I'll list all of those so you've got them. And uh, you know, it's I'm really able to show some dynamics by using an acoustic guitar uh, that are a broader spectrum than than on the electric. Some of these things that I was just showing you when I really lay into an acoustic, like this really saturates when I hit a overdrive hard on an acoustic guitar. The strings are bigger. There's more warmth than a, uh, you know, a hollow bodied guitar. Uh, it just, it'll growl more. Uh, and it'll also get away from you. So your gain structure, once you get on stage, uh, I don't like having my acoustic guitar coming at me it, it's got feedback and I don't like putting a sound something in the sound hole to make it sound like a box um, not saying that everybody that does that sounds like a box Some people get a great sound out of it and they've got something in their sound hole for me anytime I've done it uh, it my guitar sounded plastic now I play really hard so um, everything is a variable so I like having two powered monitors pointing out like, like it was my amplifier, even if I'm doing a solo show and I'm singing. Uh, they're on the floor pointing out. I've got a four channel mixer with some reverb. It sounds killer. I mean, it, it, I'm happy <laughs> when I play. I've got just a little bit of reverb on my voice. I can hear it. Nothing's coming up in my guitar. It's not gonna feed back. Uh, simple to set up, you know, Five minutes, two speakers, one pedal board, plug that into the mixer, and go. I, okay, cool. Hope you enjoyed this. I, be sure to ask questions. I'll answer them as I can.